Hello everybody. Muzzle Mike here. We're out in the garage today. I know I was talking about not having them in the garage, but I figured this is the best way to really should do this series one by one. Uh, but you might ask, what is this monstrosity right here? And I'll get, oh, of course, I'll get, I'll get you a better view of the camera whenever I hear in a few minutes. But this just happens to be a traditions PA pellet. It's actually created in Spain. It was put together actually right here in the United States. The PA pellet, what is, you might ask, what is that? Well, it is a uh, muzzle loader. Flint lock, it has the flint lock right here, which I'll give you a better view on it. And uh, it accepts either uh, black powder, uh, pyrox, or which is like an artificial black powder. It's not really true, true black powder. It actually burns a little cleaner. Or pellets. That's why they call it the PA pellet. It's a short muzzle loader. It's not a uh, long gun like you would think you would see back in the movies in Hollywood and back way back whenever this country was founded. Um, I have used this many times, I've, even though it, I, this was purchased actually in 2007. Um, it was made in 2006. I have used it many times before I decided it was time to kind of put hunting off until other things in my life settle down. But uh, I figured this is going to be a kick off my gun series. This uh, muzzle loader is a rifled muzzle loader. It has a uh, one twist for 46 inches, 48 inches. Sorry, that was 48. One twist for 48 inches, which, if you measure this barrel, it's. It, I mean, it's just under two feet, so it's only got a half a twist in it. Um, it will shoot a round ball patch, not too well though. It's not an, an accurate gun because it's rifled for round ball and patch. It will shoot conicals. You might ask, what, what's a conical? Well, it's what they call maxi balls, mini balls. I mean, they they have different different kinds. They just put them in, lump them in conicals. Uh, the ball, the maxi balls, and they have the maxi minis. They all take a, like a loop can, around the uh, the bottom to make it so it seals to the barrel. This is a 50 caliber. Um, I've used them; they work pretty well with this. Now, sadly, I, sh I didn't haven't gotten never gotten around to repurchasing any. But the last time I was out and about, I could not find maxi balls that I bought. So I went ahead and got was the Hornerby uh, XTP 50 caliber, which I'll show you. They're actually a, a Sabot. You have actually a, a casing, then you have the actual bullet that, that goes down. It fills in for a lower caliber bullet. Um, it's actually a, a 40 caliber bullet. So it fits in and works very well in a 50 caliber gun. But I figured I'd start it out here and then we will get a little bit up and close and personal and show you what the gun actually looks like instead of being so far away. Okay guys, sorry for the bad lighting. You can get a gun and look at. This is the flint lock itself. To load it up it goes back until it locks in, which is locked in. There's your frizzing. There's your, uh, where you put your primer powder in. I can't remember the name off the top of my hand. head. If you look right down, right below my finger there, probably can't yeah, you can just see it. He's actually got a little hole in there for your primer powder to go into. That way, I don't know how well this is going to go off because this is my how well this will work because this is actually a bad flint. So let's take a look at it anyway. You pull the trigger. Normally this would be shot back, and all this most of your sparks go down in there. This is actually a bad um, flint, so something I got to pick up for is a new flint. But you get a look at it. It's got the black carbon fiber stock, which lightens it up a little bit. It's got a large Octagon barrel, 
which I mean we'll get a, a half look on here. You can look at to see how thick the walls are on that barrel for the fort. It's got the uh, fiber optic front and rear sights on it, which is legal in my area. I don't have a quarter on hand, but I do have this coin, which I sometimes carry in my pocket. You can get an idea by its size. It's close to being a quarter size. And to get an idea, it's about a quarter in diameter. Right around. Um, you see this is a ramrod. Now, whenever you first get it, the ramrod only comes from here back. I added this spur here, which extends it out, gives you an extra patch section. It's really made for round balls more. But this is the main reason I got it. Screw in here. It says it's actually called a ball extractor. And you just screw it into your ramrod. It is a 50 caliber. I'm not going to show breakdown on it. Sorry guys. Um, adjustable sights. Actually, this, this thing here, I use the, uh, I was using the maxi balls, and it was not doing too, too bad. Most of my shots were being right around, oh, 50 to, say, 50 to 60 yards, anyway. And this thing, for, for in my area, is, was fantastic, because it's short enough for the brush and stuff. But where the longer ones, more traditional ones, would have been way too long and harder to move around in it. And the max, maxi balls did really well. Actually, I took my first deer down with a maxi ball with this. First deer with this, I should say. But I'll go ahead and show you what a Sabot looks like. Okay, everyone. That's what a Sabot looks like. That's a 50 caliber Sabot. It's a Sabot, that's the plastic around it. Spacer. They make them different colors and then they do different things. With the 40 caliber bullet inside. Sorry about the movement. 40 caliber bullet inside and the bullet actually looks like that if you remove it out of there. It does have a, a hollow come on, a hollow tip in it. And actually these ones here I, uh, I shot, uh, what was it, six of them I believe it was and that is like I said The lights from the one. HP XTP by Hornaby. 50 caliber Sabot with 44 caliber 240 grain bullets. And uh, at 100 yards, those weren't doing bad at all. I mean, I was pulling them in within a two inch group at 100 yards. And I mean, it was doing fantastic. Now, what I liked about this gun, well, the price was right. It was only $250. It was on sale um, at a sporting goods store. And, I mean, the weight is low for 50 caliber. And I like the, uh, the sights. I like the adjustments on it. I like how they're fiber, got the fiber optic where they glow in the low lights. And, uh, Oh, well, I also purchased the, the sling for, what was it, like 10 bucks? It was cheap, cheap, but it, it was just, this thing looks beautiful. Dislikes. Well, you might be able to see it somewhat, part of it. Oh, the light's not let, really letting me do it. But yeah, you can, I can point it out right here. Right below there. Balloon is coming off. That started happening about the second year I owned it. I got a spot on that side. Probably won't be able to see it too well on this side, but there is a spot. Oh, it's in the dark side. Yeah, right there. And there's actually got a little pit in there. It's, you can't feel it. You can't feel it at all. It's like a little black mark. But this, the blue is coming off. And that's where basically 
I've had it sitting like on on uh, logs and branches. It, it, it wasn't there very long, really. Or it's been sitting different places, but that right there is basically where from taking it apart, cleaning it. The bluing is crap. I'm not happy with the bluing at all. The coal blue on there, which I mean, it's not rusting. It just it look it just looks nasty right now. I keep it lubed up and a thin coat of oil on it. Um, but yeah, it's easy to take apart, really, to put back together. It's to me, I like it. It does very well for me, and it actually the reason why I wanted a muzzle loader to start with, especially a flintlock. In Pennsylvania, it adds two extra deer seasons to to your year. At the beginning of the year, you have your, your archery. Well, in Pennsylvania, it's archery slash muzzleloader, which you can use the inline muzzleloader that doesn't have the flint lock that uses caps, or basically you can use any type of muzzleloader. Then you have your uh, rifle season, and that and that goes from the uh, from end of November into December. Well. At the end of December into January, you have flintlock season. And that goes on for, was it, two, three weeks. So that actually gives me two extra seasons for deer season. And the 50 caliber is more than enough to take care of the job. And if I really wanted to, I could use this for all three seasons. I mean, it, it just will do the trick. Uh, another down I don't like about it is this is a production gun. It's not a hand, these uh, hand made gun. It's not really tuned in very well. And tuned in, I mean, I'm talking about the flint, flint lock system. The frizzing on it, they're soft frizzings to start with. They're, they're stamped out, cheap soft metal frizzing you gotta change them about every uh what was it every like two years well every this will last me about two years from being brand new it doesn't seal up the bottom of this does not seal up against here very well like a hand tuned one would be which will let water if it rains Go right down through here, or right along here, or right down in there, and your your flash powder will get wet. Primer powder, and another thing, what I what I normally do is I take a uh, like a cling wrap, and I'll wrap around it if it's raining out, just once, maybe one and a half, and that way it'll keep the water from coming down directly on it. And then what I'll do is I'll try to keep it either the barrel tip down slightly so the water doesn't run back. But what I'll what I also do, do is take a little bit of uh, gun grease and put right in here to keep the water from going back past it. And on this end, the business end, I'll go ahead and put a little bit of cling wrap around it, cover it up barrel up and I'll put a thin little skinny rubber bands around it to hold it on. That way you don't get no water going down into the barrels and get your get your charge powder wet. And what how way I do that is because I mean it it you don't even have to worry about taking it off if you do that. I carry carry extra pieces of cling wrap in my pocket in my uh muzzle loader bag, powder bag and extra rubber bands. If I if you happen to see a deer, you just take off the one and back there by the breech and uh, the flintlock, I mean, and uh, aim it, pull the trigger, and you, chances are with this one, if you if you do everything correctly and it does go off, it'll you'll you'll bag yourself a nice deer, hopefully. Now it does have being a flintlock on most flintlocks that are not hand tuned and everything, they are finicky from what I understand. This one here, I mean, you probably have a big, uh, what, what, uh, 40, 60 percent chance of it going off. 40 in the good, it will go off. Yeah, uh, and that's, I mean, it just makes you a better hunter, in my eyes. You, you really work with the gun a lot more to be able to predict it, to tune the 
to really position your flint in it properly to have it hit properly on the frizzing and everything. You really have to work at it. A lot of time at the rifle range, which rifle range, my rifle range does not care for this because it is a 50 caliber. It punched big holes in the the wooden uh, target backboards. So they asked me to do it to only tie it sided in whenever, right before the deer, right before uh, the season starts, <laughs> because I just end up blowing lots of hole, big holes in it through the wood. Which I mean, I'm. I tend to go ahead and say, okay, that's not a problem. But I do love shooting this, and whenever it's tuned in, I got the right uh, uh, new flint in it. Uh, she's pretty darn reliable, but you only have one shot. I mean, normally you fire off one shot, though, every deer in the, all, in, in the whole entire county will hear you. It is a 50 caliber. Now, this gun, whenever I use, was using um, conicals, it was 250 grain. Maxi balls, I would normally put around 70 grains of powder down a barrel. And uh, that would do the job. This, gu th this muzzle loader will actually shoot up to 150 grains. It's, it says it right in the book. It'll handle it, no problem. And go ahead and do it if you, if you want to use it. Now, I use loose powder, so I can, and I got the measures and everything in my uh, muzzle loader bag, so it's like I, I can measure it down pretty, pretty darn good. The uh, Hornerbees, though, the HPXTP, they take uh, 90 grain. Now I have put 100 grain pushing back, and I didn't see any really any improvement, but it didn't hurt it any. So what I do is I like to go, I like to find out how much where I start losing, how high, then start backing it off until I start losing on the other, the low end of the spectrum. Well, at 100, it didn't, it didn't help it, it didn't hurt it, but whenever I took it down to about 80, it started uh, not getting uh, the round started dropping quicker. So. I went ahead and took it back up to 90, and that's where I run it. Now, from going through me explaining and talking about my uh, PA pellet, muzzle loader, flintlock, 50 caliber, um, you might ask, well, what is it really good for? Now, I did mention, yeah, it's for, my hunt, for hunting. Uh, could you use it for self-defense? Well, I guess you could. I mean, you can use a rock if you really wanted to. You can use a stick if you wanted to. Would I recommend it? No, no. It is uh, strictly... A hunting rifle in my eyes. You gotta remember though, back whenever this country was first founded though, this is what they used. They, they, I mean, not like this. I mean, this is high tech compared to what they used. They weren't rifled, they didn't have the fancy sights, um, they didn't have the, the carbon, the graphite, uh, the carbon fiber stocks on them. I mean, they were very, they, they were pretty crude. And they didn't shoot as well as these from understand. I don't know, I've never shot one, so I can't really verify, I can't confirm or deny that. But, this does a pretty darn good job. Long range, it's, it'll, it'll do pretty decent under 100 yards, um, but it takes a long time to reload. You have to remember, You shoot, bring down, what I look at, then you put your powder in, take your ramrod, you tamp it down, put your whatever round you're on, put in your ball, oh, is it going to be ball? Oh, Ball, passion ball in there? Is it going to be a uh, maxi ball in there? Or if, I, if you're now, you just like the Sabots, you put it in there. You got to start. I have a ball starter. It's not, I just don't have it here. Right here. You have to use a ball starter. You put it in. Takes it down to about this far into the barrel. Then you use your ramrod again to push it back down. You seat it. And you give it a nice hard tap to seat. 
see it even better. Then you're not even ready to shoot it yet. Guess what's inside the barrel is ready to shoot. You have to put your frizzing up, then you prime your flash pan, put the frizzing down, then it's pretty much ready to shoot. I mean, back in the Revolutionary War days and so on, they, they got pretty, pretty efficient at it. They had speed loads, which basically the, it was individually wrapped. Um, they had little pouches, paper pouches, cloth pouches, which had powder inside, wrapped in a cloth, then they had their ball. And so it was all wrapped in one pouch. So everything was pre-measured and ready to go. Um, don't forget, whenever before you pour the powder in, you got to measure that. <laughs> I guess you don't have to, but it, it's safer to. But it's what I use it for self-defense. Not unless it's the only thing I have, because they're going to come up on you and they're going to come up on you fast. Uh, and it smokes like a son of a gun. You got to wait. It needs black powder. You get. You got to wait for that to clear. Now, that would be give you a good uh, way to possibly escape, though. I mean, you could shoot it, have a big cloud of smoke, and move move somewhere. That way they don't really know where you're going. That might help. Um, I mean, there's better guns, though. Um, flintlock, muzzle loader, it, it, it's just not the answer for that. It's, it's for hunting. This is Muzzle Mike. I've wasted your time enough. I hope you enjoyed the viewing of my traditions. P.A. Pellet. In 50 caliber, Flintlock.